20 years ago, you hypothesized that we would solve the mystery of dark matter by now. Uh, so unfortunately we didn't That's quite right. yet. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, first, what is dark matter and why has it been so tough to figure out? Well, I mean, we, we learned that galaxies and other large scale structures, which are moving around, but uh, um, prevent them flying apart by, ga by gravity, um, would be flying apart if they only contain the stuff we see, mm -hmm. if everything in them was shining. And to understand how galaxies formed and why they do remain confined the same size, uh, one has to infer that there's about five times as much stuff producing gravitational forces than the total amount of stuff in the gas and stars that we see. And that stuff is called dark matter. Um, that's sort of his leading name. It's not dark, it's just transparent, etc. Um, and the uh, most likely interpretation is that it's a swarm of uh, microscopic particles which have no electric charge and the very small cross sections are hitting each other and hitting anything else. So they swarm around and we, we can detect their collective effects. And when we do computer simulations of how galaxies form and evolve and how they emerge from the Big Bang, then uh, we get a nice consistent picture if we put in five times as much mass in the form of these mysterious dark particles. And for instance, it works better if we think they're non-interacting particles than if we think they're a gas, which would have shock waves and things. So we know something about the properties of these, but we don't know what they are. And um, the disappointment compared to my guess 20 years ago um, is that particles answering this description have not yet been found. It was thought that the big accelerator, the Large Hadron Collider at CERN, which is the world's biggest, might have found a new class of particles, which would have been the obvious candidates. And it hasn't. And uh, um, some people say, well, dark matter can't be there, etc. But what I would argue is that there's a huge amount of parameter space that hasn't been explored. Um, there are other kinds of particles called axions, which behave slightly differently, which are a good candidate. Um, and um, there's a factor of uh, 10 powers of 10 between the heaviest particles that could be created by the Large Hadron Collider and the heaviest particles, which on theoretical grounds could exist mm -hmm. without turning into black holes. So there's a huge amount of uh, possible particles which could be out there as remnants of the Big Bang, um, but which we wouldn't be able to detect so easily. So um, the fact that we've got new constraints on what the dark matter could be doesn't diminish my belief that it's there in the form of particles because we've only explored a small fraction of parameter space. So there's this search, you're <laughs> literally, uh, pun unintended, are searching in the dark here in this giant parameter space of possible particles. You're searching for, I mean, yes. there could be all kinds of particles. But there, just, there could no. be, and there's some, it's maybe very, very hard to detect, but I think we can hope for um, some new theoretical ideas because um, <clears throat> one point which perhaps you'd like to discuss more is about the uh, very early stage of the Big Bang. Um, and uh, the situation now is that we have a outline picture for how the universe has evolved um, from the time when it was expanding in just a nanosecond right up to the present. And we can do that because after nanosecond, the physics of the material is in the same range that we can test in the lab. After a nanosecond, the particles are moving around like those in the Large Hadron Collider. If you wait for one second, they're rather like in the centers of the hottest stars, and nuclear reactions produce hydrogen, helium, etc., which fit the data. So we can, with confidence, extrapolate back to when the universe was a nanosecond old. Indeed, I think we can do it with as much confidence as anything a geologist tells you about the early history of the Earth. And that's huge progress in the last 50 years. But any progress puts in sharper focus uh, new mysteries. And of course, the new mysteries in this context are why is the universe expanding the way it is? Why does it contain this mixture of atoms and dark matter and radiation? And why does it have uh, um, the properties which allow galaxies to form, being fairly smooth but not completely smooth? And the answer to those questions 
are generally believed to lie in a much, much earlier stage of the universe when conditions were much more extreme and therefore far beyond the stage where we had the foothold in experiments, very theoretical. And so um, we don't have a uh, convincing theory, we just have ideas until we have something like string theory or some other clues to the ultra early universe. Uh, that's going to remain speculative. So um, there's a big gap. And to say how big the gap is, um, if we take the observable universe out uh, to a bit more than 10 billion light years, um, then when the universe was a nanosecond old, that would have been squeezed down to the size of our solar system or compressed into that, that volume. But the times we're talking about when the key properties of the universe were first imprinted were times when that entire universe was squeezed down to the size of a tennis ball or baseball, if you prefer, um, and it emerged from something microscopic. So it's a huge extrapolation. And it's not surprising that since it's so far from our experimental range of detectability, um, we are still groping for ideas. But you think first theory will reach into that place and then experiment will perhaps one day catch up? Well, I Maybe think simulation. It, it, in a sense it's a combination. I think uh, what, what we hope for is that um, uh, there'll be a theory which applies to the early universe, but which also has consequences which we can test in our present day universe, um, uh, like um, discovering why neutrinos exist or things like that. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing which, as I mentioned, we may perhaps need a bit of AI to help us to calculate. But, yeah. but I think um, the, the hope would be that uh, we will have a theory which applies under the very, very extreme early stages of the universe, but which gains credibility and gains confidence because it also manages to account for otherwise unexplained features of um, uh, the low energy world and what people call a standard model of particle physics where there are lots of undetermined numbers. So it may help with that.